Thank you, Lorian. It's it's really great to be participating in the Migration Summit for the second year this year. And, uh, and it's, it's always great uh, to share our experience and uh, to be able to hopefully inspire more people uh, and, and share with them uh, new stuff about uh, our approaches towards uh, things related to migrants uh, in, in the region we're working with. Uh, the, today, we're, we're going to present um, a new different approach uh, that uh, uh, we're, we're looking at here in Jordan with our partners. So before I start, I'd like to introduce uh, our partners who are uh, um, helping us uh, in the implementation in different specific different projects in Jordan, but specifically today speaking about a very unique model that I hope people will find very interesting. Uh, today we have with us uh, uh, Nidal Bitar, the CEO of INTAJ, the ICT Association in Jordan, and he will present uh, a few slides uh, about the model we are presenting. And uh, also we have Dr. Ibrahim Mansour. Um, he is the Associate Professor of Accounting and the Director of the Hashemite University Career Center uh, here in Jordan. I think he's he's having an issue with the connecting, but the team are helping him getting into the, the Zoom link. So he's joining us soon. And also he will be presenting uh, the model and how we're collaborating uh, together um, uh, in, in implementing uh, our model. Uh, so um, if you allow us, we're going to guide you through uh, a presentation, and then we're going to invite uh, everyone who's joining today, and of course we thank everyone who's joining us today, to perhaps uh, write your questions or ideas uh, on the side so that whenever we're done, maybe you'd like to either share ideas, uh, uh, practice practices that you, that you like to share, or maybe questions that we can answer. Um, but we'll start uh, with the presentation. So today we're going to, to be speaking about a unique model. We call it the B2B solution uh, that uh, highly concentrates on uh, helping youth be connected with uh, jobs, remote jobs uh, in the market, which uh, serves both Jordanians and other refugees, Syrian refugees and other uh, in Jordan. Before I start, I'd like to uh, speak a bit about uh, EFE for those who don't necessarily know. EFE is a nonprofit organization which is part of an affiliate network. Uh, we operate in Jordan, Palestine, Tunisia, Morocco, Algeria, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen with support offices in the US, Madrid, and Dubai. And basically, we, we concentrate on creating economic opportunities for youth in Jordan by identifying the market needs. So everything we do is demand driven that allow us to be relevant uh, to the market. And then we bridge the gap between youth and their skills with the market, with employment, uh, with the training needed uh, uh, as discussed according to the demand in the market. So basically, only in Jordan, we have uh, trained more than uh, 22,000 youth uh, since uh, 2006. And uh, we'd like to speak more about the demography of, uh, of our trainees. Almost 85% of them uh, finish from a track that we call job training and placement that matches youth with full-time jobs. 70% of the trainees are women. And that's something we're, we're uh, very uh, proud of, especially with the low percentage of uh, women participation in the labor market in Jordan at about 14%. And uh, uh, we started, of course, uh, training uh, refugees in Jordan almost since 2015, uh, of course, after the, the Syrian crisis. Um, the difficulties uh, and the challenges about uh, training refugees in Jordan is that there are some closed professions uh, Syrians cannot access. Uh, by law, uh, and uh, the, the, there are also um, areas that Syrians perhaps are not interested in in working in. So there are several challenges. We succeeded in matching, to some extent at least, the demand in the market and the uh, um, uh, interest of uh, Syrian refugees uh, in Jordan uh, to match with these uh, uh, demands in the market. 
So I'd like to speak a little bit about uh, the core tracks that we provide in Jordan in general before I dig a bit deeper and speak about uh, the model that uh, we are presenting today. But basically we have four main tracks. The first one we call job training and placement. It ends with uh, full-time jobs. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's very much demand driven. Uh, the second one is called entrepreneurship or self-employment. Uh, it provides uh, opportunities for people to generate income uh, from home. So um, this fits a lot uh, with the demand of, of Syrian refugees, also with the women, Jordanians uh, and Syrians, uh, who for different reasons cannot work outside the, the house. Uh, for women in rural areas, uh, in governorates who don't have access uh, to the job market, uh, this is a very good solution that enables them to generate income. Uh, the third one is what we call the online freelancing or the gig economy and what we call the virtual jobs. Of course, this includes and focuses on the ICT sector. Also, uh, very much open to uh, Jordanians, Syrians, uh, who that allow them to learn a skill and also learn to become an online freelancer. So all what they need is a laptop and connectivity, which we provide them with, uh, with, with most of the projects that we implement. And then they start generating income uh, from behind their laptops. And the last track is what we call finding a job is a job, which is basically uh, uh, targeting uh, university uh, students and grads uh, from different universities, enabling them to find the jobs uh, themselves uh, in the market. The supplementary tracks uh, uh, are, are tracks we provide in Jordan, depending on also the need and demand and the funding, of course. One of them is employee upskilling or reskilling, which enable us to uh, train existing employees on different other skills that will uh, highly um, uh, increase their chances to stay uh, within within the company, but perhaps in different uh, skills. Uh, this was uh, needed, especially after uh, the COVID-19 uh, and and uh, what happened and with, with people uh, having to change jobs and to change skills. The second one is what we call career counseling and guidance in public schools. We piloted this project with some partners that enabled us to access government schools and help youth and students from grades 8, 9, 10 to learn more about the market, about how to choose their careers, how to think about their uh, uh, opportunities, uh, whether studying in the university or the TVET sector. Uh, we're also launching national awareness campaigns about specific uh, messages. So, for example, uh, the one we launched uh, last year and this year uh, was targeting, uh, encouraging youth and their parents and the communities to um, encourage uh, youth access the TVET. Uh, sectors, uh, sector. Uh, and the last one is providing technical assistance to the private and the public sector in different forms, uh, helping them in, in different areas. And now, uh, the, I would like to zoom in a little bit on the ICT track uh, in particular. Uh, we have implemented uh, several projects, one with the French, the AFD, uh, by training 490 youth uh, on the online freelancing uh, track that I mentioned earlier, uh, one with the, the Ministry of Digital Economy uh, and Entrepreneurship that was funded by the YTJ World Bank uh, project, uh, also training about 250 uh, women uh, and youth uh, and Syrian refugees, uh, also on the online freelancing uh, approach. And the last one is with, with GIZ that we're uh, currently implementing actually to train about 550 youth also in the ICT sector on the online freelancing uh, approach in particular. We see the high demand and you will hear more from my colleague Didal uh, when he explains uh, the uh, uh, approach about the ICT sector uh, in Jordan. Um, so basically, it's it's um, the, it's important to understand that uh, the economy in Jordan produces about twenty three thousand jobs every year, and today we have about four hundred fifty thousand job seekers. So the match is is really difficult. Uh, in addition to the challenge that, uh, as I mentioned, the, the Syrians do not have full access to all of the jobs in Jordan. Some professions are uh, considered closed professions for them. So this uh, enabled uh, us uh, with Intaj uh, to create a model that allows people to work from Jordan with Jordanian companies who uh, um, provide outsourcing services for companies 
outside Jordan. So this is basically the model that we wanted to highlight today. And this is the model we just started uh, implementing with uh, the collaboration, of course, with uh, with Intaj and with uh, the universities, uh, some universities uh, in Jordan. With this approach in particular, we've already uh, obtained funding from the French, the AFD and the GIZ, exactly to do these sorts of uh, activities. Uh, partially, part of it starts and is initiated by Intaj, uh, measuring the, the market needs outside Jordan and then connecting them with the companies. This is why we call it the B2B model. So it's the businesses outside Jordan with the businesses inside Jordan. This will create jobs uh, in Jordan for youth who might be providing these jobs either as part-timers, as freelancers, depending on the project they are going to be fulfilling. Uh, we have great success stories from, from uh, previous uh, projects uh, in the ICT sector, um, boys and girls and women and men, of course, as, as you will see, who are working in uh, the, the ICT sector in specific. These are examples of the nice faces of our youth who we are very, very proud of. Um, and now I uh, um, give it out to you, Nidal, to, to lead us through uh, how we, we're doing the model and, of course, with some presentation or uh, uh, introduction about Intash itself. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ghadir, and thank you very much, uh, uh, everyone. Uh, and it's uh, really an honor and pleasure being with you. Uh, and this is a great opportunity actually to share what we have been doing and also learn from uh, you uh, and uh, from the audience uh, about any feedback that they might have uh, uh, upon uh, finishing uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, so before uh, zooming in more details actually to what uh, Adir just mentioned, uh, uh, let me give you a brief about INTAJ, uh, which is the ICT Association of Jordan. Um, uh, INTAJ uh, uh, was founded based on a, a vision of His Majesty King Abdullah II in 1999, where he had a vision uh, to have Jordan as an ICT hub, since Jordan only counts on, on the human capital, and it's human capital. So uh, a, a royal initiative called REACH uh, was issued in 1999 uh, with uh, many outcomes. Uh, uh, and action plans. One of these actions was to create uh, uh, INTAJ, actually, a membership association uh, that would represent the private ICT sector and, and uh, uh, contribute to its growth, as well as uh, establishing Ministry of ICT, because there was no Ministry of ICT at that time. Um, there was Ministry of Post and, and, and these things, you know, uh, prior to uh, transforming to a digital economy or to the journey uh, of the digital economy. Uh, so INTAJ uh, said serves, uh, as mentioned, uh, as a membership-based association with companies uh, in Jordan uh, who work in, in IT or uh, IT-enabled services or in around the IT in, in general. Uh, and uh, as mentioned, uh, we provide them with the tools required to grow and expand and to uh, contribute to the national economy. Uh, so... Basically, uh, INTAJ uh, serves uh, or achieves this uh, vision uh, or this mandate through six major pillars. Uh, next drama, please. Uh, uh, these six major pillars uh, are, uh, include the business enabling environment where we do a lot of lobbying and uh, uh, advocacy with the uh, uh, policymakers. Uh, one of the success stories that we're so proud of that in, in 2016, we uh, managed to convince the uh, government to reduce uh, income tax uh, on IT services from 20% to 5%, uh, reduce uh, export tax uh, on IT-related services to be 0%, uh, uh, reduce sales tax from 16% to 0%. And of course, we do a lot of lobbying. Now, currently, we are uh, discussing with uh, members of parliament a new law, which will be related to uh, data privacy law. And Jordan is very crucial for uh, the sector. So we do a lot of lobbying, yani bottom line, and we do a lot of uh, ad hoc lobbying uh, on almost a weekly basis regarding any ad hoc things that happen between our members and the uh, uh, government. Uh, the second pillar, we call it digital economy. We uh, promote uh, digital transformation in other sectors. 
such as يعني, health sector, banking sector, uh, tourism sector, agriculture sector. We do a lot of roundtables between our member companies and the member companies of other uh, sectors, such as even uh, chambers and others, uh, to let them know how technology can be really uh, an added value for them and enabler uh, towards their uh, Uh, growth and make them more competitive. And the third uh, pillar, uh, we call it human capital, which is also uh, because, you know, technology relies heavily on uh, human capital and uh, to do the match uh, making or the bridge the gap between academia and uh, uh, industry. So we do a lot of activities in, the, in, regard, in this regard. And uh, the fifth, the fourth pillar is access to market. Of course, we do a lot of activities in this area whereby we participate in international uh, and regional uh, uh, fairs and exhibitions uh, uh, such as in Saudi Arabia and Dubai and uh, uh, Barcelona, the Mobile World Congress in uh, Qatar and uh, others in Oman. We're going next month to Oman with the Jordan Pavilion of eight companies, for example, we're going to Iraq, to Erbil, and then Baghdad, and then Saudi Arabia, seamless. So we've been doing a lot of uh, Jordanian pavilions in these countries. And the uh, fifth uh, pillar, we call it access to information. Uh, as you know, uh, most of uh, the companies in the IT sector and in Jordan in general are SMEs. Uh, so they really have an uh, issue in uh, accessing information about new markets or about enhancing their presence in other markets. Uh, so we created in partnership with GIZ uh, a new uh, um, function called uh, market intelligence function, which is uh, which includes uh, a portal that can be accessed by the members of Intage uh, to learn more about uh, the markets, the opportunities, the tenders, and it's updated on daily basis or even instantly at, at most of the time. Uh, and also we have a, a research unit whereby uh, we can provide uh, reports about countries, about recent technologies and the opportunities there. And the uh, sixth pillar, we call it startups and entrepreneurship. And Taj acts as a facilitator with all the stakeholders in the ecosystem, including incubators, accelerators, uh, VCs, uh, service providers, to really ensure that we have a, uh, a strong and vibrant ecosystem, which we do, but we still need to do a lot more. Uh, we uh, are managing a national portal called startupjoe.com, which uh, includes all the startups, uh, VCs, uh, service providers, support organizations, incubators, accelerators, so and one portal. And also we map uh, 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 all the startups in Jordan who are almost around 450 uh, startups based on 21 verticals. Uh, uh, so we know who's in cybersecurity, who's in fintech, who's in health tech, etc. Uh, and of course, we have uh, we recently uh, launched a new uh, uh, tech female uh, economic empowerment unit called SheTex Unit. This is in partnership with GIZ, whereby we really need to show that. IT companies that there's a huge value of empowering tech female uh, by uh, 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 hiring more, by enabling them in a more uh, professional way and taking into consideration their value. Uh, and of course, we uh, hold every year uh, uh, the MENA ICT Forum, which is the Middle East and North ICT, uh, North uh, Africa ICT Forum every two years since 2002, and it's always under the patronage of His Majesty. This forum is, is, a, is a huge uh, event uh, uh, that uh, includes all the uh, buyers, uh, sellers, uh, investors, uh, uh, entrepreneurs uh, under one roof. Uh, so they can really share experience and uh, uh, conduct uh, deals, etc. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, this will give you like a very high level of the ICT sector in Jordan. Uh, we have around 2,000 companies who work in ICT in Jordan who hire around 26,000 people. I think this number is very low and it can be increased. Uh, uh, take into consideration also that the female participation is 33%, uh, which is considered to be relatively high. As Ghadir mentioned, uh, in Jordan, unfortunately, it's only 14% in general, but the ICT sector employs around 33%. We think it can be uh, even 50% or more if we work together uh, uh, and achieve uh, what we are doing now. Uh, the revenue of the sector is around 3 billion US dollars with around 440 startups. And we have very good uh, internet penetration uh, with good infrastructure actually in Jordan. We graduate around 7,000 students from ICT related colleges from around 27 uh, universities and 51 community colleges. The next slide, please, Rama. 
this is very quick, just to let you know that we have good incentives uh, for the sector uh, companies uh, in terms of uh, uh, taxes and uh, uh, customs. Uh, so I uh, already talked about this earlier when we talked about the advocacy. Uh, next drama, please. And this gives you also what's happening in Jordan in regard to the ICT graduates. Uh, unfortunately, 60% of uh, the graduates uh, are in unemployed, uh, though uh, we have a huge demand uh, internationally uh, regarding uh, skilled uh, ICT professionals. So we graduate around uh, 5,000 to 7,000 people. Actually, it's around 7,000 people now, but uh, the hiring is, is less than 40%. Can we go to the next slide, please, Rama? Okay. Uh, the advanced digital skills required uh, globally and uh, regionally. Now we cannot, uh, and uh, locally, we cannot say that it's local. This is what's locally uh, needed and what's regionally. Everyone needs these skills. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them, uh, but uh, you can uh, tell from uh, what they are that these are the uh, technologies that uh, everyone needs now um, uh, in order to find a job. Uh, but also it's not about holding a certification, it's being competent in, in these uh, skills. Uh, can we move uh, to the second slide, please? Okay, uh, this gives you an idea of what's happening globally. These are recent uh, numbers. Uh, and the world loses around 390 billion uh, US dollars because of the lack of IT specialists. So uh, this shows how important it is uh, to and uh, to to be equipped with uh, high skills in, in what I just mentioned earlier. And 52% uh, of IT leaders see that the qualification gap is a main problem, and 82% of organizations believe it's hard to attract and retain talents. Next slide, please. Okay, this gives you example of uh, the shortage in, in uh, some countries uh, in, in Europe in specific. Uh, so as you can see, uh, in Spain, there's a shortage of around 50,000 uh, uh, programmers and developers. In Finland, around 15,000. In France, around 200,000. In Germany, around 124,000. In UK, so 40,000. Uh, so all these countries, they always look for uh, highly skilled and uh, competent uh, people in IT. Uh, as well as in Ireland to 12,000, in Netherlands 37,000, in Australia 60,000, in US alone it's about 1 million, uh, also in Canada 200,000. So, so there is around 2 million to 3 million shortage of IT skilled people. And what we have been doing at Intage, we identified that the IT outsourcing is a great opportunity for um, uh, two things, actually. The first one, uh, that this will contribute to the growth of the companies through exporting their services. And the second one is to create jobs. So as you see, the IT outsourcing uh, is, is increasing um, and uh, it's about half trillion US dollar uh, uh, market. Uh, so this will be a good opportunity if we can move to the second slide and we can elaborate more. Um, and uh, identifying that uh, no jobs could be created without empowering and enabling SMEs. As I mentioned earlier, SMEs uh, they have uh, they are they contribute they constitute around 99% uh, in Jordan. Uh, so we need to enhance their internal processes. We need to support them in business development and accessing new markets. We need to assist them in recruiting and hiring highly skilled IT professionals or make these uh, uh, well-trained, competent uh, professionals available for them. Uh, because of the ITO is a huge opportunity, as I mentioned, and rapidly uh, evolving. And it's it, we think that's the only way that it can really create jobs and uh, also contribute to the growth of the companies and which will also contribute to the GDP of the national economy. Next slide, please. Uh, Intaj has many initiatives and many programs uh, uh, in, in, in different areas, as mentioned, in, uh, as SheTex Unit, as uh, we have an initiative called Tech Aid for Startups, we have an initiative called Startup Joe, we have an initiative um, uh, called uh, yani, uh, in different domains. But one of these initiatives, it's called Source Tech, and we're heavily focusing on that. And Source Tech, actually, it's based on three winners. The first, the first winner is highly skilled Jordanian talents and youth, mainly youth and female, of course, and the Jordanian IT companies, whereby we need 
really to help them, especially those who work in IT or BPO, or is also support other companies to convert and to add new line of IT or BPO services. And the third winner are the regional and international companies in, in Europe, in the US, in the region, who are looking for resources. Um, because we have uh, two options. Uh, one of the options is really to uh, train uh, uh, and equip uh, talents or youth with uh, skills and competencies related to digital skills and uh, leave them uh, find the jobs by themselves or uh, have them uh, f- leave Jordan and be attracted by other international companies and immigrate, etc. So this is one option which we don't uh, prefer. The second option is really to create opportunities uh, for uh, the companies in Jordan uh, and helping them grow and bring more projects for them uh, and improve their capacity, whereby getting more projects, getting more uh, uh, opportunities, they will automatically hire these uh, talents and automatically, of course, uh, matching them with these international and regional uh, companies. Next slide, please. Uh, of course, this uh, source tech uh, also uh, now we are so proud to be partnering with the um, EFE and uh, uh, supported by GIZ to conduct it, uh, to conduct a pilot um, whereby it's based on the uh, business development and readiness unit at Intaj, which uh, 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 one of which its mandate is to define Jordanian IT companies' uh, competitive advantage and value proposition. Uh, so we do. We already started and finished actually uh, throughout the project that that Radir just mentioned, which is Unimatch, uh, mapped around fifty companies. Uh, we defined their competitive advantages and uh, we identified their outsourcing readiness through an assessment uh, tool uh, that has been also prepared by uh, a professional consultant. And uh, now we are in the process of identifying opportunities through different uh, means and channels. We are already contacting, for example, embassies in Jordan. We are also contacting embassies in, in uh, abroad uh, such as in Jordan, like the Sweden embassy, we are already in touch with them. The, uh, in the UK, we are already contacting the Jordanian embassy. Um, also, our expats uh, uh, abroad, also, they are uh, uh, supporting this initiative. Already, we have, uh, Radir knows, we have a good community of uh, Jordanian uh, professionals in Ireland uh, that we are already in touch with them and uh, they are helping out. And of course, we do a lot of market research uh, and identify associations like Intaj in other countries countries whereby they have the network of companies who need resources. Uh, so by once we define these uh, potentials, uh, we uh, work on uh, uh, defining or developing the value proposition of the companies and their narrative and identify uh, what areas they are excelling at and they can provide the best uh, of their services and do matchmaking between them and these international companies in Europe and in the region, especially GCC countries, including Iraq and uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, of course, we depend heavily on the market intelligence function at Intaj, uh, which I just talked about, because it really gives uh, a lot of insights about opportunities and about the markets in, in very uh, deep details. Second, please. Um, now we see the value of uh, EFE uh, big time because we cannot do uh, this part uh, at Intaj. Uh, only one who can really deliver it in a very professional way is EFE, whereby they will uh, they are uh, selecting potential and eligible youth. Uh, through different criteria, assessing them, uh, building the capacity based on the needs that we identified uh, uh, through the business development and readiness unit uh, activities, and of course, uh, match these graduates in these IT uh, companies. Next, please. And uh, I think we are done. Yes. We are done. Uh, for this, uh, this gives you an idea of what we have been doing. Uh, and uh, we really believe that this model can scale uh, to uh, tens of thousands of, of people if we really work uh, very closely and with the proper um, uh, collaboration model that I just mentioned. Thank you very much. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nidal. Uh, this is insightful. I, I hope because I, I see some people joining from different countries, from uh, Kuwait, from uh, Egypt and from others. So I, I think that this model 
uh, tends to solve the, pr- the part of the problem of the unemployment in our countries because simply we, we can't uh, um, encourage all of the unemployed youth in Jordan, for example, to travel elsewhere to get the jobs. We need to find another solution where they can be placed if, if you want to use the word placed uh, or connected with the, with job opportunities that are flexible, uh, depending on the demand. And uh, these days, we, we don't speak only about the demand of each country. We're speaking about the demand globally. And this is the the, the method that we're, we're trying uh, uh, to, to, to work upon. So we find the demand globally in the market and then uh, make this B2B connection. And then EFE comes in to provide uh, these opportunities, the, the youth with these opportunities, uh, bridging the gap with the skills needed. Exactly. So now, now I'm, I'm going to uh, introduce again uh, Dr. Ibrahim Mansour, um, the Associate Professor of Accounting and the Director of the Hashemite University Career um, Center. Uh, also, we, we have signed MOUs with several uh, universities uh, in Jordan uh, who are strong in this market and uh, who have a track record of uh, building the capacities of their youth uh, in their universities uh, who uh, also are integrated into these uh, solutions. Uh, so, Dr. Ibrahim, uh, we're uh, waiting to hear from you. Thank you very much, uh, Wadir. And uh, I would like actually to thank you and the EFE for giving me this opportunity to have a presentation with your esteemed uh, institution and institu- organization. Uh, the concept actually that we are sharing here uh, that we have uh, some sort of problems that facing us here in Jordan or on the uh, regional or even at the global level, which is actually the problem of the refugees, uh, okay, that are uh, actually uh, excelled uh, from their homes, countries due to conflict or environmental change or any persecutions, okay, and uh, they have actually to move without their uh, uh, Okay, their intention to do that, but they have, they are forced to do so. Uh, the concept actually being uh, uh, raised by the uh, United Nations High Commissioner uh, uh, by different uh, reports, uh, which actually raised the problem of refugees and the responsibility uh, of the different uh, countries, whether at the regional uh, level or at the global level. Uh, the concept actually, we need to handle this some this uh, type of problems, which is the refugees problems that, okay, they are moving to other countries, whether the countries uh, they to stay as an origin or the countries as transit, okay. Uh, the concept is that actually, next slide, please. Uh, maybe we are in the Middle East have uh, more concern about this because uh, uh, maybe mainly we are the country, uh, the countries that are hosting uh, the major bulk of the refugees. Uh, as a responsibility from these hosting countries, we need to provide a range of services, and maybe through the governmental agencies or sometimes non-governmental agencies or sometimes through for profit or non-profit organization, sometimes by religious bodies, okay? The concept with that as a, an academic institutions, we have a responsibility regarding these issues. I could say that actually uh, the different uh, forum uh, start to insist the responsibility of the academic institutions and the academic faculties regarding the this problem. The first uh, responsibility, I think, is starting with the uh, uh, awareness of the academic institutions and the awareness of the academic faculties of their responsibility. So next slide, please. Uh, The academic, actually, including professors, think tanks and research centers and universities, actually, we first need to better understand this crisis by generating knowledge which can be drive evidence-based solutions, inform programming and influence policies related to displacement, refugees' needs, and host communities. So at the first level, actually, we need uh, such some sort of awareness of our responsibility, whether at the professor level of the or the academic institution level or the research centers level. Okay. And we have to identify 
Okay, this rule by, for example, uh, creating new ideas, creating a new, uh, let's say, research that will identify this type of problems or how we can handle it from the academic level or from the uh, government level or from the uh, other uh, organizational, whether uh, non for profit NGOs uh, level. Okay, we can actually also provide opportunities for analysis, critical thinking, bring by bridging the gap between academic policy and the humanitarian development realms. Okay, uh, this is was actually uh, insisted by the declaration of refugees and migrants and looking towards the comprehensive refugees response, which is the voice of academia is seen very more uh, critical. So we are not uh, actually uh, uh, it's our responsibility somehow, okay, as an academic institution, as a faculty members, to be a part of the uh, uh, stakeholders that will uh, actually influence and engage with this type of problems. Is the refugee special in Jordan that you know Jordan is hosting around one million uh, Syrian refugees and about four hundred thousand Iraqi, Iraqis, and uh, some other uh, refugees from other uh, countries, okay. Uh, so we are now uh, is a part of uh, this, uh, uh, a part of the stakeholders that have to involve with this problem, which is the refugees, a problem that's uh, actually, uh, uh, let's say, uh, affecting uh, the uh, all the countries that are actually hosting these refugees. But what uh, at what levels actually, as an academia and as an academic faculties or an academic institutions, we can share. Next, please, next slide. We can actually working on a different levels. First of all, we can working at upskilling, okay, the uh, uh, the candidates, whether they are uh, actually our uh, students at the university or even the youth by distance learning. Uh, upskilling, it means actually we have to identify what types actually of skills that the uh, job market are in need. Uh, and uh, especially the new trends, as uh, Mr. Nadal mentioned, uh, especially in the financial technology, for example, or cybersecurity, uh, or machine learning, or etc. Uh, the concept actually we need to identify different type of skills that are needed in the uh, uh, job market, and we need to work in that through actually our programs and our partnership with different, uh, let's say, uh, uh, different uh, institutions or different uh, governmental bodies or uh, different uh, professional bodies that we could actually uh, have like an, uh, uh, professional skills that are actually needed uh, by the uh, market, uh, by the job market. Uh, the other concept is to, to make an alignment and curriculum development uh, by linking between education opportunities and the future uh, opportunities in the job market or the needed uh, uh, opportunities in the job market. Uh, this is actually at the, uh, what we call it in the upskilling level that actually we need uh, to provide in the professional skill for our uh, uh, youth, uh, whether at the university level or at the refugees. Uh, camps uh, level, and we can uh, actually uh, provide uh, this by uh, uh, different uh, channels and different tools and uh, mechanism. And we might mention some of our experience here in the Career Center at the Hashemite University after I actually after I mentioned the other uh, actually uh, uh, solutions for the refugee youth and for the, our uh, youth. Actually, the second. Uh, uh, actually approach that we could uh, uh, enhance uh, our uh, refugees or our uh, youth uh, is through uh, here providing scholarships for the refugees, okay? And through what we call it uh, career path, okay? That we identify the career path with our academic career path for the uh, youth or the refugees, okay? Uh, the career path, it means that actually what types of opportunities that, uh, what type of the studies that you are studying at the university are giving you in the, actually, uh, what opportunities are waiting for you in the capital market. 
Okay, uh, especially the one that is related uh, to the, uh, the emerging technologies that we are talking about now, uh, like the uh, financial technology, like uh, uh, the, as we mentioned, the machine learning or the cybersecurity or the blockchain, and etc. Uh, we could go for a consortium for universities to offer hybrid degrees for the, for example, uh, the uh, refugees, the like a blended model that we will, but that need an accreditation, okay? And we could uh, waiving fees for refugees. Uh, sometimes we need actually to go to the accreditation. Next slide, please. Uh, the, next slide, Rama. Uh, we, one of the concern about uh, giving our academic uh, programs and uh, uh, professional programs uh, through the online learning and distance learning is the validation and accreditation of the refugee studies. Uh, maybe we actually need to develop a system to recognize the refugees' previous certification, for example, and diploma as well as the new learning and competences they have acquired uh, non-formally or informally. Uh, this is actually under the, uh, uh, should be taken into consideration, should be a concern. Uh, how to validate these types of actually of uh, studies or certificates by the refugees. Uh, the other concern is the environment that's conducive for refugees. Uh, we need to have a responsibility uh, as an uh, academic faculties or an, as an academic institution. Uh, we must be able to shed a positive light on the refugees and help the youth foster a positive uh, perception of refugees at least to uh, make it like a convenient environment for them within the academic, for example, uh, 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 within the academic campuses or the university campuses, or within uh, the uh, virtual environment, actually, uh, through the distance learning or the online learning. Uh, we need to engage the refugees as well. Okay, like, uh, for example, uh, uh, in let them participate in development of the curricula or the advocacy efforts that uh, actually we need to make regarding uh, to engagement of refugees. Uh, we need to understand their uh, situation and their needs, and we need the demand to, uh, like providing them with additional accompanying services that actually will uh, be, uh, they will be able actually through these additional uh, services to have more engagement and to feel more uh, conducive environment and to be able to apply online learning. This is, we could say that this is in general an approaches or uh, an education solution. Let me talk about our experience here in uh, the uh, career center at the Hashemite University. We were actually trying to identify the career path for our youth or for even the refugees that are studying here, okay? in the university, which is, we call it, first of all, they need to be uh, qualified uh, through their academic programs. So they need to focus on their uh, getting their, uh, 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 what we call it, uh, certificates, academic certificates. And uh, we were saying, actually, if we have to go for, for uh, this type of, uh, for example, uh, to give this uh, type of certificates through online, uh, we actually now facing the problem of the accreditation. So we insist actually it should be uh, actually a canvas uh, uh, accredited uh, environment. Uh, so this is uh, another problem uh, might we face regarding the online model or a distance learning regarding uh, our youth or refugees. Uh, especially, you know, the accreditation is local one and it's uh, sometimes uh, a global one. So we are not actually free for going for another another uh, learning platform, uh, uh, okay, uh, except the face-to-face -face environment. But actually, this has need, uh, this actually, a platform need to be studied and need to be uh, somehow uh, uh, accredited from the different references, whether academic one or professional one. Uh, the other idea is uh, actually, if uh, you are not able actually to attend our uh, academic programs, you might go to professional programs. So our students need to be uh, not just uh, qualified, uh, they need to be certified as well. So uh, at the, cert the certification, the professional certificate levels, I think, uh, uh, our uh, youth or our 
refugees okay might engage in a different uh, types of uh, professional certificate for exams that will give them actually uh, a big opportunity uh, in their uh, career path within the capital market. Uh, the other concept actually we need to enhance uh, their English proficiency as well as uh, actually is a must now in most of our uh, uh, work environments especially with the if you are looking for actually some type of a distinguished uh, uh, job or distinguished uh, vacancies opportunity uh, so you need actually to enhance your english proficiency we are working on that with the actually uh, <coughs> sorry in collaboration with the uh, us embassy okay and the amid east uh, by providing uh, uh, classes for uh, our uh, stu- for our uh, uh, students and uh, for the refugees that are studying okay here in the university and the other thing is actually we need to enhance their computer literacy and uh, mr nidal actually already mentioned actually the new trends in the market which is actually built on the in new emerging technologies so we are trying to make like an mous with different actually provider of the it uh, for example uh, 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 training uh, courses uh, they are actually uh, provide our students and provide uh, okay uh, our youth here uh, like a social responsibility of their uh, companies uh, the other thing actually which is uh, the we the uh, our uh, students or whether they are uh, I mean, uh, uh, local or whether they are refugees actually they need to enhance their uh, what we call it uh, communication and soft skills and uh, thanks for the FE that they are engaged with us in a long program regarding uh, communication and soft skills uh, so far actually we have trained more than 500 okay students at the Hashemite University through the corner uh, uh, American corner and through the HU Career Center so we are working actually on this model uh, after that actually we are trying to get like an internship opportunity for our students okay through the MOUs with different like G- Jodby uh, like the MEDs like the American Stock Exchange like the uh, Jordanian uh, Central Bank uh, like uh, who other uh, actually uh, uh, private sector uh, companies okay and uh, after that actually we also uh, call for uh, uh, the uh, or the last uh, let's say the last uh, uh, approach that we are trying to uh, so find the solutions for whether uh, our students or uh, even the refugees is through the recruitment uh, 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 opportunities uh, with different uh, uh, let's say companies in the private uh, sector so far we uh, uh, through our MOUs, sometimes we give the uh, like the priority uh, for our students and for our uh, graduates uh, to get uh, the okay opportunity to have, uh, for example, uh, job vacancies uh, with uh, uh, different banks and different uh, companies. Uh, this is what I have actually for this presentation. It was brief. Uh, I hope it. <laughs> uh, I give a good, uh, 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 let's say. Uh, uh, ideas and uh, good approaches how we could actually as an academic uh, with our uh, uh, academic institution we could uh, help and provide solutions for our youth whether they are refugees or whether they are uh, students uh, and local ones thank you thank you so much dr ibrahim uh, before i turn uh, to the questions and i i do appreciate that uh, some of the partic- the some of the uh, attendees are already uh, posting their questions in the chat box which is great i would encourage the rest of you to do the same while we go back to one of the slides that uh, we'd like to maybe uh, uh, wrap up with and ask uh, nidal maybe to maybe highlight again the model that we are presenting uh, uh, today, and after this slide, I'm going to move to the chat, uh, to the chat thank, box. With the yeah, thank you, Radir, and also thank you, Dr. Mansour, for all your insights, valuable insights. Thank, thank uh, you. Yes, thank you, Radir. Actually, uh, this model actually t- t- maybe uh, makes everything I mentioned very clear. Uh, yet, the devil in the details, as they say, 
so it includes every detail. Every uh, box here includes so much details and uh, so much hard work. And on this occasion, I would want to thank uh, the Intaj team, actually, uh, who have been working on, on our part, as well as EFE team, also have been engaged heavily in, in each of these uh, uh, activities within this uh, project. So as I mentioned earlier, the assessment of 50 plus IT companies have been based on IT or readiness assessment tool, which has been developed by a great consultant, actually, and it was validated by best IT or BPO providers, service providers in Jordan and in the region. So, and it was, it took around maybe hour and a half to be filled. So it really was very difficult to get the buy-in from the companies to fill this assessment uh, tool uh, because included so many uh, details and required them to fill so many uh, things. Uh, uh, and we selected, uh, based on the score of this tool, we selected the top 10 companies who scored highly because, as mentioned, it's a pilot uh, and it's a, a the fund cannot uh, allow for more than uh, 10 companies. Uh, so we selected the, the greatest companies uh, who need, uh, who already already ready or they might need some uh, help in uh, improving their uh, internal processes or other uh, stuff. Uh, we got their detailed information. We built the marketing narrative, uh, narrative for them uh, and the detailed profiles. Uh, for example, uh, each company uh, provides uh, each uh, service in details. So when we go to uh, identify the potential clients, we, we tell them what we have. It's not what you have. Uh, because this is important. So, uh, for example, we, just, we don't go to a potential client, tell them, what do you need? We know we tell them, this is what we have. If you are uh, okay with that, if you feel a need of, of such uh, uh, skill sets, uh, we'll be happy to talk. So we not uh, not to waste your time and not to waste uh, our time as well. Uh, then we facilitate the matchmaking uh, between these companies and the, cli and the clients, uh, as I mentioned, in Europe or in the region, including Saudi Arabia and Iraq. And uh, here comes the role of EFE, which is <clears throat> as, as, as important, if not more, uh, by sourcing these uh, skilled people and youth and uh, assess them and uh, make them ready and reskill them based on the needs that we identified by uh, because some projects you know some projects might need uh, five uh, skilled people in certain areas some projects might need maybe 20 uh, or more uh, so uh, EFE is are taking great care of this and of course the KPI for us is 250 uh, well trained uh, people who will be placed in these uh, companies that have been uh, selected. So this is what I want to share with you also to make it uh, clear as I'm a visual person. So I always like uh, slides with infographs and uh, boxes. So thank you, Ghadir, for this opportunity again and everyone as well. Thank you so much. Uh to, to Nidal and uh, Dr. Ibrahim for this uh, presentation. I already see three questions uh, in the chat box and I encourage the rest of you to ask more questions uh, or maybe to share uh, ideas with us. But th the first question is uh, uh, by, by Nerman, uh, who asks Dr. Ibrahim whether uh, the curriculum uh, at the university uh, is designed uh, in a way that helps bridge the gap between the labor market and youth. Uh, is it uh, a work integrated learning, for example, that you are uh, adapting in the university? How can you tell us more about this? Uh, you, you're muted, Dr. Ibrahim. Uh, thank you for the question. Yes, uh, actually, the, this concern is our concern as well. Uh, the alignment between the uh, Actually, the curriculums and the okay, the needs of the job market is our concern at different levels, even at the uh, governmental level and at the academic institutional level, and at actually at the faculty and departments level. We started actually to actually to work on this as a project, okay, to restructure our curriculums, okay, uh, regarding actually 60 40 percent. The concept actually is to go for the conceptual framework for different uh, modules and uh, to make like, uh, okay, the, the application or the practical side of that conceptual level, uh, okay, that will fit with the, uh, uh, with the job market. 
Uh, how we are going to do that? Actually, we are participating now with the professional bodies. Uh, for example, uh, as for my subject, which is the accounting, for example, we actually already started with Sergeant. We already started with BWC. We already started with KPMG, okay? Uh, to make like a, a, a shared project to they will be our partner to participate and restructure our curriculums to actually to be aligned between the uh, the concept regarding uh, different modules and the okay the needed uh, skills and the needed uh, okay uh, uh, what we call it uh, uh, certification uh, within uh, 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 for example uh, uh, this type of uh, study. Okay, we can say the same actually for the engineering. We can say the same for the IT. So at the conceptual level is not uh, enough anymore. And they all we, we the university start to think seriously. Okay, uh, to a link between uh, in the, in the curriculums uh, at the conceptual and scientific level and at the practical and uh, professional level. So we are actually started. And if you remember, Dr. Ghadir, that we already suggested, uh, okay, a curriculum regarding how to prepare students for the job market. And we are in, in the process, and I think we are on the final stage to accredit this uh, module. And uh, actually, so we'll be able also to give an orientation for our student, okay, and how they could prepare themselves for the job market, how the academic institution is a part and a participant uh, in this, uh, okay, uh, issue and this concern. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, there is uh, another question also by Nerman regarding the refugees in Jordan and the challenges they might face in registering. He's asking about registering as a freelancer. There is there is no such registration for freelancers. Freelancers online, specifically online freelancers, can be online freelancers without necessarily having to register anywhere. Uh, so basically, um, you create uh, an account and you become an online freelancer. So refugees and Jordanians uh, can do that. Uh, some of uh, the refugees or most of re the refugees perhaps cannot access uh, bank accounts, but lots of uh, international pla on online freelancing platforms allow for wallets. So they open wallets and uh, they are usually able to collect their money uh, from the wallets. Uh, you're also asking about uh, the closed professions, uh, especially for the blue collar uh, jobs that the government has uh, issued. Um, uh, you're asking about uh, how, how come and how, how this is happening. The the I'm not justifying, I'm explaining. The unemployment rate in Jordan among youth is about 50%. And they are trying to manage, the government is trying to manage between uh, providing uh, jobs for Jordanians uh, as a priority uh, uh, in Jordan. Uh, our job in the NGO sector and in the development field is to find uh, solutions uh, for everyone and to be inclusive uh, of everyone. And this is why uh, all of these tracks that uh, we have been focusing on serve both the Jordanians uh, and Syrians equally uh, so that we provide them with, uh, with the livelihood opportunities. Um, there is a question by Simon on the gender. Uh, now, if we're speaking about the, the the tracks under EFE, as I mentioned, almost 70% of our uh, trainees and beneficiaries are females. Uh, in the freelance and the online freelance uh, sector, uh, we might find something similar to that, I suspect. And I'd like to hear from Nidal if you'd like to comment on that. But I think... The statistics show that uh, there is a very high percentage, almost 80% of unemployed uh, uh, women in Jordan have high education uh, in universities. So we have those. The problem is employing them in the formal sector with the full-time jobs. But I think if the opportunity allows them to either work remotely or as freelancers, um, I, I do, I'm hopeful at least, and we were just launching these these programs, but I'm hopeful that uh, the percentages uh, uh, may be higher. Nidal, maybe you'd like to comment on that? Yes, uh, thank you, Radir. And uh, actually, more than 50% of graduates from ICT-related colleges are female. Uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the percentage of uh, women in the ICT sector is 33%. However, 
uh, we have to be uh, also uh, honest uh, that uh, these 33% are not only uh, engineers or software developers. You'll find a lot of admin, uh, HR, uh, marketing, whatever, uh, including. So, so I expect uh, the employed from the female within the sector is maybe less than 20%, if not less even as engineers, etc. So we're losing a lot of potential uh, of, of female participating in, in this sector. Uh, uh, and this is due to many reasons that everyone knows, whether transportation system, whether uh, commuting. Uh, most businesses are uh, uh, in Amman itself and maybe in even one part of Amman as well, western part of Amman. So it's hard for ladies uh, to commute from uh, other governorates or from other uh, uh, far away from Amman due to the uh, unconvenient uh, transportation system. However, uh, thanks to COVID, uh, which expedites uh, the remote uh, work, and we see now some uh, companies who are really shrinking even their uh, office space uh, and uh, hiring people remotely, whether male or female. So there is a huge opportunity. And this uh, also, I think, will be improved uh, while uh, when we uh, uh, work uh, or operate uh, the sheet text unit, which I just mentioned. Um, we need to take into consideration something very important, Radir and everyone, that uh, tech companies in general, they really don't care about the nationality, about the uh, gender, about the yani, uh, anything. They, they really care about competent people. Uh, so that's why it's important what you are doing at AFE really to improve the competencies of, of uh, these talents. Um, and uh, especially female, I'm sure that when female uh, have really uh, more competency, they will be, you will see more hiring of uh, tech female. Um, and the freelance, I really don't know if that was your, your question, but uh, I already see some uh, tech female working from uh, governorates in the sector. Uh, so I hope I answered the question. Yes, thank you, Nidal. And uh, moving on with with some more questions. M M Mikal, I, I don't understand the question very well. Maybe if you rewrite it uh, uh, in a way that I get it. Uh, Lorian, the, you're asking about the freelance platforms. There are plenty. These are international platforms, freelancer.com and others. So th there is nothing. There are a few specifics for Jordan, but this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about international, regional types of uh, platforms. Uh, Emnak, you're asking how do international companies find youth in Jordan? The the model we're presenting the, the, does not encourage international companies to seek Jordanian youth uh, to work for them. What we The model we're developing over here is that businesses outside speak to businesses in Jordan, companies, ICT companies in Jordan. These companies will have access to Jordanian youth who received the proper training uh, uh, related to the job. And then the, the relationship becomes business to business relationship. And then the youth in Jordan will work with the Jordanian companies in Jordan uh, to fulfill the requirements of the regional companies. Uh, that's that's uh, how we're looking into it. Uh, also, um, MNAC is asking a question to Dr. Ibrahim. Uh, how do you secure funds for curriculum change or linkages uh, uh, that are related uh, to linkages related to the universities themselves? How do you secure funding for that? Well, the concept actually is not to have fund or not actually, because our concern is uh, actually any change in the curriculum that will fit the accreditation standards, the accreditation criteria, and whether the accreditation is a local one or whether it's a global one like WACSB or the ABIT or etc. Okay, but one uh, one major concern is uh, regarding the fund. We have different actually uh, denship. They are concerned with the, uh, actually raising funds uh, from different bodies through Erasmus, for example, or through Bador or through uh, USAID. Uh, but regarding the curriculums, actually, uh, the only uh, concern for us as actually is the accreditation, uh, and we don't actually raise funds regarding the change of the curriculum. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. There is a question by Sonia. You're asking about the challenges uh, to assist the trained talent to get hired. 
for remote jobs. So basically, there are there are different challenges for it. So, for example, we have worked on uh, projects that uh, prepare youth for the gig economy or the virtual jobs, and uh, you you train them on this, and then. Uh, for any reason, uh, they get a full-time job opportunity. So you you won't say some people won't say no to that. So it depends. So this is their their intention from the beginning might change in the in the in in the end whether they continue in the gig economy or perhaps go to something else. So it's it's a challenge if we're talking about a funding opportunity that we need to fulfill. I don't see it as a challenge because. That's great too. Like they are securing an income and they have an economic opportunity. Uh, but basically, uh, what, what what we are trying to do uh, with this model is to create this demand for, or to find the demand uh, from the regional companies towards the Jordanian companies. And uh, uh, the more uh, opportunities we open uh, for youth uh, in Jordan. Uh, the less challenges we will face uh, time by time. I mean, the, the, this is why the, the job of Intaj is really very crucial right now because they are assessing the markets outside Jordan and inside Jordan with the ICT uh, companies in order to increase this space. We need to increase this space to eliminate the challenges youth might find in them matching uh, their uh, uh, background, their talent, and then um, and be able uh, to, to, to match with the demand in the market. Nidal, maybe you want to comment on that? Yes, uh, actually, uh, I wanted to add something to what you mentioned earlier, Adir, uh, about uh, that the sector is closed for Jordanians uh, as employees, of course. Um, however, uh, something very important uh, to, to, to uh, recognize that uh, uh, we... Jordanian, some Jordanian IT companies, uh, when they hire, as mentioned, they look for competent people. And I'm talking about highly competent people. So there are cases, and many cases actually, whereby Jordanian tech companies, they ask for uh, approval from the government of Jordan for uh, Syrians, for uh, other nationalities, even Sudanese and others, and you know, Agenciat Muqayyadi or these restricted uh, nationalities. And they got these approvals because they had an argument that we cannot find Jordanian uh, who can perform this job. Uh, and uh, the government, uh, in, in most of these cases, they approved these uh, permissions. So that's why we really need to focus on the uh, quality of uh, training, quality of education, and we need to uh, also expect from these candidates, especially the refugees, that they need maybe need to put extra effort on upskilling themselves by themselves uh, uh, after they get into the programs that EFE is holding or any others. Uh, because there are exceptions, uh, and these exceptions happen when uh, uh, companies cannot find uh, highly skilled people uh, from Jordan. So they go and uh, request uh, permissions or approvals from the government uh, of other nationalities. So this is just a note I wanted to highlight. Yes, thank, thank you so much. Um, Mohammed uh, Abdel Karim is asking about uh, the, the refugees' access to universities. And so th there is a difference. So refugees can access all faculties in all Jordanian universities in Jordan. The issue is with the employment. Some uh, sectors are closed as closed professions uh, against Syrian refugees in Jordan. So I don't know. I, I assume you're asking about uh, the faculties, you said. So they can access uh, different faculties in different universities. It's The, the problem is with uh, some jobs. Uh, Lorian, you're asking, are the companies mostly from the region? Nidal, maybe you want to, uh, to answer that. With the B2B model, uh, she's asking, are the companies mostly from the region? The, the, the companies, uh, uh, are the, I mean, there are two types of companies. The, the companies in Jordan, of course, who are the beneficiaries and whom we are supporting to, to grow and to export, etc., and to hire. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, there will be uh, focus on uh, regional companies, especially uh, Saudi Arabia, whereby, you know, there's a huge boom uh, there and there's a huge demand. Uh, because we at Intaj, we have been working very uh, closely with our uh, Saudi colleagues and, and uh, friends uh, there. So we know that there's a huge demand of resources, as well as Iraq, of course. Uh, 
So there is a uh, yes, uh, a focus uh, to be honest on uh, Saudi market and the Iraqi market in specific. In addition to maybe Oman uh, as well. And uh, Nidal, you were telling me about your uh, a few trips you're scheduling uh, soon uh, yes. to visit countries who might show interest, and you can give us examples uh, to sure. those. Next uh, May we'll be going to Oman. Uh, Oman uh, will be. Uh, Uh, promoting uh, uh, about eight companies there under a Jordanian pavilion. Uh, and uh, then we'll be going in, uh, end of May uh, to uh, Sweden. We will be holding uh, B2B meetings uh, between Intaj and the ICT Association of Sweden, uh, which is the Intaj like in, in Sweden, uh, because they have the network to show them uh, uh, these companies uh, and to uh, promote them. Uh, we'll be, as mentioned, we'll be having booklets uh, especially designed for these uh, companies with all the details, especially the 10 companies we mentioned. And then we'll be going to Dublin, uh, whereby there will be Dublin Tech uh, Summit, uh, which is a very important. Uh, 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 event in, in Ireland and in Europe. Um, and we also will be meeting with the uh, uh, Irish tech companies who are interested in resources uh, through our partnership with Tech Ireland, uh, which is an entire like in Ireland as well. And then uh, we'll be uh, going to London, whereby His Excellency Ambassador of Jordan there will be arranging some meetings between us and uh, some uh, tech companies in the UK for this purpose. So Uh, and we'll be continuing doing the, the same in other countries uh, through different means, whether online or uh, field visits. Uh, thank you, Nidal. Also, it's it's a good opportunity uh, to thank uh, the AFD and the GIZ because they believed in this concept, which we have launched for the first time in Jordan. And uh, they are funding us uh, to pilot uh, uh, this model uh, in Jordan. So that's really great. Uh, also uh, thanking uh, the ambassadors uh, from the Irish embassy, the Swedish embassy, the French embassy, who are also facilitating the linkages with the, their region or their countries uh, outside. Uh, they, they have been really engaged and uh, they They believe uh, in in the solution, um, and that's very much uh, important. Uh, I, I have posted my email address in case anybody would like to send questions. Maybe I'd like to encourage Nidal and uh, Dr. Ibrahim, if you like, to insert your email addresses uh, in the chat box in case anyone uh, have uh, questions that uh, they, they might want to uh, check with you later, because I also... Um, Notice some people asking about perhaps uh, thinking about replicating the model in their countries uh, in the future. We're more than happy uh, that all of us are, are so happy to uh, be helping people here uh, with your own uh, uh, setup in your own countries, uh, perhaps to uh, help you find uh, solutions of this kind. Done. Lo yes, Lorian, yes. maybe I, I can't see more questions. So... Do you want to take it from here? Hi. Um, thank you for that really interesting session. Um, and I'm really happy to see this happening because when I came to Jordan many years ago, you and, and I was doing research to see how the viability of this. So I'm really happy to see that hopefully my research inspired you guys to do this model. And, you know, and, I, and when I spoke to you, Dr. Um, Nadal, a while ago, we were talking about this model. So yes. this makes me so excited that it's actually happening. So Mabruk, Mabruk. Thank you. And <laughs> actually, you so I, I just want to highlight something uh, important. Maybe I mentioned it, but not uh, uh, did not emphasize on it, that uh, this model is heavily sustainable because we talk about business development and readiness unit. Uh, that okay, it, it needs uh, an ignite or it needs a support, which is the spark of, of this. Uh, yani it, uh, GIZ have been uh, giving a great uh, spark uh, to make it happen, but uh, eventually it's going to be very sustainable because it's going to be taking percentage of the deals that will be uh, uh, doing when they do the matchmaking between the IT companies in Jordan and the clients uh, abroad. So that's a very important factor. The sustainability is a major one. Yeah, that's really good. Does, does EFP plan to replicate this model in other from other locations 
we're discussing this internally to see depending on and also remembering that we're piloting this model here in Jordan right now we started we have the funds we have started the activities as Nidal mentioned so we're we're perhaps waiting to achieve some uh, uh, solid uh, results over here but definitely a very interesting model for uh, the rest of the network uh, of EFE great does anyone have any other questions in the audience I was very happy with the engagement of uh, uh, people joining uh, the session. Lovely questions, lovely uh, uh, interactions over here. So I'd like to thank everybody uh, for their questions as well. Maybe I have one more question, for, you know, for all of you. Um, the training, is: does EFE do the technical training or is it done in collaboration with university partners like the Jordan University? It's going to be probably in collaboration with the private sector themselves. We want to to provide training that is relevant to the market. So we will uh, provide them with some training that is tailored and designed by EFE, but also necessarily some on the job training that is needed by the, the private sector who are going to hire them in the end. So uh, that, that's that's important to have this linkage and the training space for uh, uh, companies themselves. And this is very ideal, actually, because uh, the companies uh, who will be uh, executing the projects uh, uh, and uh, employing or hiring these people, they know exactly how, what to train them on. And uh, most of them uh, yeah, and it will uh, be uh, giving them the the exact uh, skills uh, that, rather than any other partner. So it's a blended uh, model uh, or hybrid model uh, between EFE and the private sector, uh, and with, which is ideally the, the perfect, uh, uh, which ideally leads to a perfect uh, impact. Now, I, I want to add something. The, the academia's role is important because I must say different universities graduate different level students, especially in the ICT sector. So, for example, the Hashemite University, where uh, Dr. Ibrahim works, for example, is considered one of the very good universities that graduate ICT uh, students. Uh, so, then it becomes important to partner with such universities so that we get access to the youth graduating from these universities because probably they will have a better chance joining the model uh, than, than others because they are more ready uh, to the market. So this is uh, bringing in the academia and uh, the, the universities to the uh, collaboration uh, loop. There's a true Dr. Ghadir, actually, especially when uh, actually aligned between the uh, modules, curriculums, and the uh, job market needs, especially the skills and the certificates. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Well, if I may add here, uh, uh, to be honest, uh, yani we have to be frank as well. Uh, unfortunately, except few uh, universities, they have been really providing uh, a good pipeline uh, for the companies. Uh, uh, even if the, if the university is giving the best education, uh, still the private sector has to do its homework and they have to get these uh, students to an on-job training like two months, three months, etc. Uh, to make them really head uh, What's happening, uh, unfortunately, is a, a few universities, uh, including, of course, Hashimite University and some others, uh, they are really doing that thing and, and uh, giving good pipeline for the companies. However, many others, unfortunately, the graduates, uh, even sometimes they are, I don't want to say untrainable, but it's hard really to, to, to select them for the, even the boot camps. So there has to be a rehabilitation even before getting them into a boot camp or uh, due to the lack of English uh, uh, language, which needs a lot of work because, you know, IT sector needs uh, English uh, uh, language. Uh, which is a satisfactory level. We're not talking about uh, Shakespeare level. <laughs> uh, but um, at the same time, attitude, which also EFE is doing a great job in this area, attitude and soft skills, but and willingness to learn and willingness, willingness to uh, uh, for self-actualization. That's very important. So because uh, I've been always uh, talking to many youth uh, that uh, it's all about them. It's not about what we do for them. 
uh, they have really to dig into uh, the new skills and and, and uh, teach themselves because the resources are available online. Everything they can learn through uh, free courses that are available uh, wherever they go throughout uh, the internet. So it's important really to make them uh, passionate about uh, developing themselves uh, and take it from there. And this is due to the, uh, for me at least, the unsatisfactory level of education system in Jordan starting from KG1. So uh, we have to confess uh, this uh, unfortunate fact. Absolutely. Totally agree. I want to ask about, um, Nadal, you mentioned the soft skills. What sort of support for the, these professional skills? Is yeah, EF- I think they are the standards. Uh, I'm sure EFE know this much much better than me. Uh, but now we're looking for uh, good attitude, uh, good uh, communication skills, uh, good uh, uh, time management. As mentioned, uh, self-actualization uh, and passion uh, is the most important thing. Radir maybe can elaborate more on this. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of these skills, uh, including we, we're training them on things like uh, ethics at the workplace, communication absolutely. at the workplace, not only communications, uh, things related uh, to preparing them uh, for the workplace. And now uh, we're also uh, including uh, how to not only to find a job, but how to retain your job. Because another problem that uh, we keep seeing, seeing, especially with this new generation, actually, is that they, they get bored really quickly and they want to move from one place to the other really, really quickly. So we we try to advise them of how you transition from one place to the other, what's the best approach, how do you do that, when are you more ready, and when does it uh, benefit your CV versus when does it hurt your CV to keep moving from one place to the other. So we try to give them these insights uh, at at an early stage uh, so that not only they, they find a job, but what do they do when they find a job? Then how do they handle it? How do they uh, work around? it. So uh, th- these are examples of uh, the skills uh, we provide them with. So thank you everyone for attending today. It was really great to see the engagement. Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim. Thank you, Nadal and Gadir. Special mm-hmm. thanks to you. I will see you soon, inshallah. Sure. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Um,